Thank you for browsing page 121. Today we're going to take a look at Challenge Magazine number 36. This is from 1988. Uh, just going to take a look through it, uh, see what uh, GDW was offering us for all their various games. This is a nice uh, GDW Game Designers Workshop house magazine that was going at the time. They would have denied it was a house magazine, but it was. Uh, also, real quick, subscribers, please keep the channel uh, growing. It's growing nicely. I want to keep it growing. Also, Patreon, if you could take a look and help out there. I want to say thank you to existing subscribers and patrons. Uh, Patreon is important because I'm looking to improve a little bit about the, the setup right now. I'm, I'm hoping to get a Traveler backdrop, but uh, right now I can't swing it. So if there's anything you could do to help out, that would be great. Uh, also, Jump Point. Jump Point will be happening within a few days of the posting of this video in Frankfurt, Illinois, in a great comic and game store called Amazing Fantasy. We're playing AD&D 1st Edition and Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. So please take a look at the link below for the video that will give all the details. Right now, I don't know who's attending. Nobody has told me they're coming. As far as I know, it'll be my gaming group and I sitting there playing. And by the way, we will. But I can seat eight people at the AD&D game run by my son Adam and eight people at the Mongoose Traveler game run by me. Characters will be provided. A good time should be had by all. The last one was a blast. So if you can join us, please do. Please leave a comment below to let us know you're coming. Back to the important stuff. Challenge Magazine number 36, cover to cover, today on page 121. Challenge Magazine number 36, Game Designers Workshop for 325. I'll take it. <clears throat> we open it up, and inside we see an ad from... TSR, win the battle for the 25th century with Buck Rogers. Uh, never re really got into the Buck Rogers stuff. Uh, TSR was making a big push with Buck Rogers in the late 80s for reasons that go into the whole Buck Rogers money, backing up D&D &D and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, just Google it. You'll find it. Um, this issue is from 1988. Uh, I was frustrated they never published which month these were. I, I remember that bothering me back then. This was managing editor was Lauren K. Wiseman, of course. I think he edited the entire run. And then that fine table of contents. And as always, we get a nice uh, editorial from Lauren Wiseman. I always liked that Lauren just did a short editorial and just detected conventions and then uh, GDW products traveled through, distributed throughout the world. West Germany, <laughs> Japan, United Kingdom. Um, just nice. Between this and Dragon, you get a good look at what conventions were around. Uh, I was able to go to a couple of Gen Cons in the 80s. I went to 84, 87, 88, and 89, I think. And then I went to a couple in the 90s. I haven't been to Gen Con since, though, unfortunately. Twilight 2000, Red Maple. Uh, it's an adventure for Twilight 2000. They were really big on Twilight 2000 back in the day. There we go. Nice article, or nice adventure. One thing, Dragon Magazine, as I page through those, I see just a ton of ads, all these little blurbs. Dragon really had it going with the ads. I'm sure they were making quite a bit of money with Dragon Magazine back in the day. Uh, GDW didn't have quite that luck, so we get full-page articles. But for us, at three and a quarter, only a quarter more, that's a pretty good deal. <clears throat> there we go for the adventure. Unleash your imagination with Battlescape, a revolution in game board design. So you had uh, Battlescape and from Geohex. You go ahead and have these little Geohex hills and stuff. I know these go for princely sums online now. I never had any of these. These guys were out of Portland, Oregon. Geohex. Pretty neat. Especially if we're playing Battletech. Which uh, I wasn't yet, but I would be soon. Equipment for Armor Crews for Twilight 2000. And now we get Paper Mayhem. The information play-by-mail magazine. This was out of uh, Paper Mayhem out of Ottawa, Illinois. Approved for use with Mega Traveler. Oh, detailed starship deck plans in 15 and 20, 25 millimeter scale. And these were from Seeker. And they were officially licensed. I don't think I have any of these. Space Gamer, Fantasy Gamer, a new game. Space Gamer, Space 1889. Featured in issue 85 of Space Gamer. There you go. For Space 8, 1889. Darkness Falls from the Air. Uh, nice little adventure. There you go. Some new equipment you can use. 
Never played Space 1889. I know a lot of people really loved it. I never played it. New Mega Traveler products from Digest Group Publications. 101 Vehicles, Starship Operator's Manual, and Traveler's Digest Magazine. Starship Operator's Manual may be one of the best supplements ever printed. <laughs> I'll stand by that. That is a really good supplement. And these were available uh, from your dealer by the editors of Mega Traveler. And these guys were out of Boise, Idaho. Uh, it's a shame this stuff isn't in print anymore. Traveler News Service. We're all the way up to the year 1118. This is where we got our updates on what was going on with the Rebellion. We'd get it through this, and we'd get it through uh, supplements or modules that were released. Uh, and we got a lot through Digest uh, Magazine also. This was a two-page. I always liked a two-page. This is one of the main features I enjoyed. Uh, Mega Traveler, The Green Hills of Earth, A Nice Adventure by Charles E. Gannon. And it follows character from Iris. Uh, that's the Imperial... Uh, Security, uh, it's a Navy security intelligence, uh, was featured in issue 34. Uh, I like Iris. I played a character under Ibis, which was out of Dragon Magazine, essentially the same thing. But yeah, we got the Green Hills of Earth. So do we actually go to Earth in this? I don't remember. I read this years and years ago. Uh, undercover in the Salamani Rim. Yep, and Mega Traveler. So this be Rebellion Era. So pretty neat. You get to go to Sol. Go to Earth. Starship Design Notes for Mega Traveler. I know Mega Traveler's Starship Design System has been much maligned over the years. I'm not a gearhead. I've said it before. I really wasn't much to design ships. I'd try my hand here and there. But I've had a lot of people really rip on the Mega Traveler uh, design over the years. <clears throat> but here you go. Some Starship Design Notes for you. So, errors and corrections. There were a lot of those, unfortunately, Mega Traveler. Stuff that needed to be corrected. Uh, we get it off from a bunch of different books. Imperial Encyclopedia. <laughs> Referee's Manual. Wow, lots of corrections. I, I'm going to have to spend some time with this issue. I'd forgotten this was in here. And then we get to the Albedo role-playing game. Universe of Anthropomorphic Science Fiction Adventure from Thoughts and Images out of Seattle, Washington. You want to play a space mouse, this is your chance. Or some kind of space fox. Devil in the Dark for 2300 AD. I played a little 2300 AD back in the day. Uh, I I just, I'm more of a traveler guy. Nothing against 2300 AD. I know that Mongoose is publishing 2300 AD uh, now. And the products look fine, but I'll stay with Traveler. Just how I am. Not knocking 2300 in the least. A lot of people loved it. I liked it. We played it a couple of times. I liked it just fine. Continuing through the article for 2300. We come to Anatomy of a Missile for 2300. Now, I would read this kind of article, even though 2300 and Mega Traveler were two different systems. Because even if you couldn't take exact numbers and plug in different design features, there's still ideas to be had out of these. So I'd absolutely read an article like this all the time. Challenge the Stars with Space Master, the role-playing game. I did play Space Master. They were out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Iron Crown Enterprises. <sighs> yeah, if you want to look at charts, that's your game system. Mac Alternatives for Battletech. I was not playing Battletech yet. I started later in either late 89 or sometime in 90. Uh, so I really wouldn't have read this issue since I wasn't really playing Battletech yet. I came in kind of when the clans did, right around that time. Uh, I love Battletech. I love sitting down playing a good game of Battletech. And there you go. Nice look at some equipment for Battletech. And then we go to Warhammer 40k Sunstroke. This is an actual scenario for a small unit of Space Marines and opponents. Uh, was this for the role-playing end of it? The Sisters of Purification. And then there were the Little Sisters of Purification. Interesting. I'll have to show this to my son, Adam. He plays Warhammer and he plays Sisters. be interesting to, to get his reaction to this. So I'll show. It's a little adventure you could play with your Warhammer 40K stuff. I like Warhammer 40K. I play Thousand Suns, by the way. Uh, and occasionally just generic chaos. And sometimes uh, um, uh, featuring Papa Nurgle. Papa's a fun guy. All that gross stuff. Uh, but yeah, usually I'm Thousand Suns. 
Okay, Mega Traveler, science fiction role-playing game, Adventure in the Shattered Imperium. And here is the box set itself with the core books that came inside from Game Designers Workshop, Bloomington, Illinois. Doppelganger for Star Trek, still being published by Facet at the time. Scenario is dedicated to the late Philip K. Dick, guy who brought us Blade Runner. Long Star Trek article. I did read a lot of these Star Trek articles because I took ideas for various space games from Star Trek the series and even a couple of the novels, and I found it uh, worthwhile to read the Star Trek articles in uh, Challenge Magazine. And here we have Fantasy Role-Playing by Mail. You can direct a party of up to 15 fighters, magic users, etc. through a dungeon, and this is Heroic Fantasy from Flying Buffalo in Scottsdale, Arizona. Sky Galleons of Mars, fast-paced game of aerial combat in the Martian skies for Space 1889. And very humid here today, so the pages are sticking together. Plan 9 from Outer Space. <laughs> this is a game, apparently, for, oh, for use with Paranoia from West End Games. Uh, I tried Paranoia uh, back in the 80s, I think under this system. Uh, I, we played it once or twice. The guy who was excited about it ended up moving away, and we never went back to it. I looked at the new uh, Paranoia Kickstarter from Mongoose, and in fact, I think, yeah, I, in fact, I did a little promo video for it, because at the time I was thinking of getting into the Kickstarter, but having discussed it with my uh, group of players, they didn't seem all that excited. They said, yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead and get it, but I know how that goes, and I didn't want to spend the money if I, we weren't going to play it. That's just our group. Our group doesn't like games where we're in opposition to each other. We generally like to role-play on the same side. Just how we play. So, Paranoia. That's supposed to be a really fun game. I played it, and we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, beware of Wrecked Enterprises. Mega Traveler supplements include Black Friday, Under Ancru, Sonic Handbook, and Speaker Scepter, Sector. Mega Traveler Software. Oh, okay, you could use it on your computer. I had a computer by 88. Uh, I wasn't buying software for it yet, though. This is from Wrecked Enterprises in New York, New York. And here we have a review of Top Secret SI. That was the second edition of Top Secret. We played Top Secret and we played Top Secret SI. Uh, both good games. Uh, Top Secret SI, I think, was a little stronger uh, design, uh, but it was also it had the advantage of being, you know, eight or nine years after the original was out. I think Top Secret was published in 80, and then the, uh, the follow-up was published in 87 or 88, so seven or eight years. But uh, Top Secret SI, I have quite a bit for it. We did play it. I'll have to give it a try one of these days. I'll, I'll put it on the channel. So pretty much looking at a lot of the stuff. Oh, yeah, all the stuff from that was offered at that time for it. And then we're going to finish up uh, some of the adventures from page 45, page 75, and page 30. So finishing up some various adventures that were published. And then we look at the classifieds. I used to look at the classifieds every single month. Just see if there's anything in there I was interested in. Or if there was anybody in the area looking for a Traveler game. Uh, Traveler was has always been hard to find people for. Uh, especially in the late 80s. Next issue for challenge. We have Tiger Tiger Burning Bright for 20, uh, Twilight 2000. From Above and Below for Sky Galleons of Mars. Mega Traveler Adventure, Casual Encounter, and Beast Jerry. Three Blind Mice, Lone Wolf by Dave Nielsen Revisited. The Hilarious Star Wars Scenarios, Wookiees Amok. And Starfleet Battles, Battletech, Warhammer 40k, Renegade Legion, and more. I love Renegade Legion. And a nice ad for Battletech, The Star League from FASA right here in Chicago. And then the back ad is a house ad for Twilight 2000. Uh, a game that was paying a lot of the bills for GDW in addition to Traveler. They really pushed this. They pushed Space 1889, 2300. They had a lot of good games. Uh, they were really into the role-playing stuff at this time. They weren't making the uh, the bookcase uh, combat games anymore. Or they were making them, but that not nearly as much as they were. They had gotten into the role-playing pretty well. But um, there you have it. That's a look at challenge number 36 from Game Designers Workshop. All that for $3.25. I was very excited to hand him my money and run out of the store with this guy. Uh, I always like Challenge. I look forward to it whenever it was out. I don't think this was monthly. I think it was like eight or nine times a year. Uh, and Challenge could have been, could be a little challenging to find, no pun intended, uh, simply because it didn't publish on a regular basis. 
and a lot of stores did not carry it. But fortunately, I had a lot of hobby stores right in the area, and uh, I was able to always get my issue of challenge, mostly from Pat's Hobbies, which used to be in Oak Lawn, Illinois. They closed years and years ago. So that's it for today on page 121. I hope you liked what you heard and saw. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please take a look at the Jump Point video down below. And I uh, hope to see you there. And I'll see you next time on page 121.